Hi guys, Victoria here. This summer has been quite crazy. I have been traveling quite a lot and I have posted a lot of videos about my travels, including the Northern Mariana Islands, Guam and the Philippines. You can watch all those videos on my channel. I am going to link it down below in the description box. And we finally came to my last summer trip of 2022, which was a week in Italy. Today is the second video of my Italy series. In the first episode, we've been to Padua and Bologna. And in today's episode, we are going to Florence. I hope you enjoyed the first episode. If you haven't seen it yet, please click on the link up here or on the link below in the description box and watch it. If you are not subscribed to my channel yet, maybe this is the time so that you won't miss any of the upcoming videos. Where did we go? You will see in the video. Let's jump right in! After visiting Bologna, we drove to Florence in the afternoon and we went for a walk in the evening and we had dinner. We didn't really do much that evening anymore because we were pretty tired, but we woke up very Right and early in the morning at 5.30 we were already heading down to the city center to avoid the crowds and avoid the 40 celsius degrees heat we were roaming the cities of Florence very early in the morning and it was cool and quiet and safer and we could see all the si sites without all the tourists for example this street this is how it looked like in the evening and then this is how it looked like in the morning at 6 a.m. Yep, that's right, this is the same exact street. Where did they all go? They just hid all their stuff and their carts somewhere in the ground floor of the buildings of the Florence city center. Florence is a city in central Italy and the capital city of the Tuscany region. It is the most populated city in this region with almost 400,000 inhabitants. Florence was a center of medieval European trade and finance and one of the wealthiest cities of that era. It is considered to have been the birthplace of the Renaissance, becoming a major artistic, cultural, commercial, political, economic and financial center. During this time, Florence rose to a position of enormous influence in Europe. Its turbulent political history includes periods of rule by the powerful Medici family and numerous religious revolutions. UNESCO declared the historic center of Florence a World Heritage Site in 1982. The construction of the Florence Cathedral was begun in 1296 in the Gothic style and was structurally completed only by 1436 with the dome engineered by Filippo Brunelleschi. The exterior of the basilica is faced by polychrome marble panes in various shades of green and pink. The cathedral, topped by Brunelleschi's dome, dominates the Florence skyline. The Florentines decided to start building it without a design for the dome. The project proposed by Brunelleschi in the 14th century was the largest ever built at that time and the first major dome built in Europe since the two great domes of Roman times, the Pantheon in Rome and the Hagia Sophia in Constantinople. The cathedral complex in Piazza del Duomo includes the baptistery and Giotto's Campanile as well. The baptistery is one of the oldest buildings in the city constructed between 1059 and 1128. The baptistery is renowned for its three sets of artistically important bronze doors with relief sculptures. The south doors were created by Andrea Pisano and the north and east doors by Lorenzo Ghiberti. Michelangelo dubbed the east doors the gates of paradise. The Italian poet Dante Alighieri and many other notable Renaissance figures including members of the Medici family were baptized in this baptistery. In the 15th century, Florence was among the largest cities in Europe with a population of 60,000 and was considered rich and economically successful. Cosimo de' Medici was the first Medici family member to essentially control the city from behind the scenes. Cosimo was an Italian banker and politician who established the Medici family as effective rulers of Florence during much of the Italian Renaissance. 
His power derived from his wealth as a banker and he was a patron of arts, learning and architecture. He invested in art and culture, including Donatello's David, the first freestanding nude male sculpture since antiquity. Although the city was technically a democracy of sorts, his power came from the vast patronage network along with his alliance to the new immigrants. Cosimo was succeeded by his son Piero, who was soon after succeeded by Cosimo's grandson Lorenzo. Lorenzo was a great patron of arts, commissioning works by Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci and Botticelli. The Palazzo Vecchio is the town hall of Florence. It overlooks the Piazza della Signoria, which holds a copy of Michelangelo's David statue. The original David stood at the entrance from its composition in 1504 to 1873, when it was moved to the Accademia Gallery. A replica erected in 1910 now stands in its place, flanked by Bacchio, Bandinelli's Hercules and Cacus. Notable artists who lived in Florence include Cimabue and Giotto, the fathers of Italian painting, as well as Arnolfo and Andrea Pisano, renewers of architecture and sculpture, Brunelleschi, Donatello and Masaccio, forefathers of the Renaissance, Ghiberti and Della Robbias, Filippo Lippi and Angelico, Botticelli, Paolo Uccello and the universal genius of Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. The Uffizi Gallery is a prominent art museum located adjacent to the Piazza della Signoria next to the Palazzo de Vecchio. The building complex was begun by Giorgio Vasari in 1560 for Cosimo de' Medici so as to accommodate the offices of the Florentine magistrates, hence the name Uffizi, which means offices. The river Arno, which cuts through the old part of the city, is as much a character in Florentine history as many of the people who lived there. Historically, the locals have had a love-hate relationship with the Arno, which alternated between nourishing the city with commerce and destroying it by flood. One of the bridges in particular stands out, the Ponte Vecchio, whose most striking feature is the multitude of shops built upon its edges, held up by stilts. The bridge also carries Vasari's elevated corridor linking the Uffizi to the Medici residence in the Palazzo Pitti. Although the original bridge was constructed by the Etruscans, the current bridge was rebuilt in the 14th century. It is the only bridge in the city that have survived the Second World War intact. The Basilica of the Holy Cross is the principal Franciscan church in Florence. It is situated on the Piazza di Santa Croce. It is the burial place of some of the most illustrious Italians, such as Michelangelo, Galileo, Machiavelli, the poet Foscolo, the philosopher Gentile, and the composer Rossini. Thus it is known also as the Temple of the Italian Glories. The National Central Library of Florence is a public national library and it is the largest library in Italy and one of the most important libraries in whole Europe. Guys, we have managed to check all these sites from the outside within an approximately 3 hour period between 5.30 in the morning and 8.30 and after that we went back to our accommodation to have our breakfast. <laughs> 
After our breakfast, before it got too hot, we went to the Piazzale Michelangelo, which was built on the hills located south of the Florence historic city center, following the design of the architect Giuseppe Poggi. This monument occupies a privileged position observing the city from above as a guard attentive to all the beauties that the city has to offer. This square was dedicated to Michelangelo and the copy of the David was located in the center of the square. Part of the Piazzale is a parking lot, so if you arrive by car you can park without any problems. It is also possible to reach the Piazzale Michelangelo by taking the bus number 12 or 13 from the city center. You notice that we have not entered any of the buildings or museums and it was actually on purpose. We didn't want to spend hours and hours with going into museums when we only had one day in Florence. We rather check out the city from the outside and maybe in the future we will be able to go back and immerse ourselves in the vast majority of museums that they have to offer. They actually have over 70 if not over 80 museums in the city and there was one we actually wanted to enter which is the museum in the Palazzo Vecchio which is well known from Dan Brown's book and movie The Inferno and the museum actually even offers an inferno tour and we had the information that the museum is open until 11 p.m. so we wanted to go there in the evening after 8 maybe to just um, have a calm look at the art there however the museum actually closed at 7 and even Google said that the building is supposedly open until 10 but then when we took a closer look it turned out that actually the museum itself is open only until 7 and we went there definitely after 7 in the evening. Anyway uh, before we had the tiramisu we took a quick stroll in the central market which was designed in 1874 by Giovanni Mengionim who is also the architect of the well-known Galleria Vittorio Emanuel II in Milan next to the Duomo. In addition to the stalls where you can buy fresh goods, fresh foods and cheeses and meat and stuff, there are also a number of places where you can eat something upstairs, where they have a food court with all kinds of options. But we didn't eat there. We went to the La Capelle Medici restaurant to eat bruschetta and tiramisu. I looked up what is the best place in Florence to eat tiramisu and this was one of the restaurants that came up. Most of the other restaurants that appeared were really much outside of the city center where we were based and it would have been a bit too difficult to get there. So we decided to go with this one and we were not disappointed. The tiramisu was very nice although the portion was a bit small I have to say <laughs> and the bruschetta was nothing special the bruschetta that I make is as good or even better following our lunch we had a siesta and after our siesta we went out again in the city at around 6 p.m when the weather was still pretty hot around 38 celsius degrees but we wanted to get ahead of the crowd in the restaurants and have our dinner first thing just as the restaurants were opening for the evening. And following this, we just took a walk and then went back to our accommodation because we still had ahead of us four more days in Italy to discover Tuscany and the region. So we decided that we need to relax to be able to tackle the upcoming cities. What is coming up next in the next episode is going to be a deep dive in Tuscany. We are going to San Gimignano, Siena, Volterra, Pisa and Lucca. So we will see a lot of the beauty of the region in the next video. I hope you liked this one. If you did, press the like button. And if you are curious to see the next video, then subscribe to the channel so that you are notified when I'm uploading. Thank you for tagging along today. I hope to see you at my next video. Until then, goodbye.